Small and affordable, powerful computers are getting really common these days with things like the Raspberry Pi and other microcomputers. You can basically buy a computer from 10 years ago that's super compact and also super powerful. So I was thinking, why can't I build an arcade machine around one of these tiny computers rather than spending upwards of $2,000 on a genuine arcade machine? So that's what I'm going to be doing in the next few videos, is building a Raspberry Pi powered arcade machine that can support up to two players, and is a full size, genuine looking arcade machine. So this is the SketchUp model that I created to uh, just test out the design I wanted, and see how everything was going to fit together, see how wide I could make it, uh, see how the size of my monitor would fit in, and see if the layout of the buttons and controls uh, work properly. So this is this is the uh, test control pad that I made with the six button layout and the two joysticks. And then this is the arcade machine itself. Um, I probably should have gone for a more complicated design when fitting the pieces together. Here I just had them butt up against each other. Um, ideally I should have put like a joint on the back here to glue these pieces on from the front, uh, but I did not. This is the monitor I had, it's 24 inches, and uh, I didn't want too big of a bezel, but I wanted it big enough to fit two players, so that's what I ended up with. So now that I have this planned out, I can start cutting up the pieces and making the actual arcade cabinet. So the first step in cutting out the arcade cabinet is to cut out the sides. I used a jigsaw for this because it's a relatively complicated shape. Um, I drilled out the corners with just the largest drill bit I had to make the turning radius of the jigsaw a little bit tighter um, and I didn't have to deal with having cut off too much excess material after I was done the first cut. Um, I'm using half inch MDF for this, uh, it's just whatever was cheapest. After I was done cutting out the first panel, I just laid it on top of the second piece of MDF that I had and traced around with the pencil, and then I just cut out the jigsaw the same way I did with the first one. The next thing to do was cut out the front panels. These are all just simple rectangles and squares, so I just used a circular saw and a table saw wherever possible. After those were all cut out, I glued the front panel and the top panel together um, out of two smaller pieces because I didn't want to buy a whole new sheet of MDF just for two pieces So I just used some smaller pieces and glued them together to make a bigger piece I wouldn't have had to do this if I modified the design of my side panels a bit to be a bit smaller That way I could have cut both of them out of one sheet of MDF and then had an entire sheet left over for the front panels after everything was cut out, it's time to put it all together. I used a nail gun and glue, wood glue for this. I would not recommend using a nail gun in this at all. It makes it a huge pain. Um, it can split the wood. It's really not a good thing to use to put the arcade cabinet together. I would instead modify the design so you could use just strictly glue and clamps to do it. I didn't have big enough clamps and I didn't think the nail gun would be such a bad idea, um, but if I were to do it again, I definitely wouldn't use a nail gun. After it was all assembled, I glued on some supports for the control board and for the monitor bezel. I wanted the control board removable, so that's why I'm just gluing on a piece of wood on the side so it can just sit in, I don't have to screw it in or anything like that. After everything was done being assembled, I used some wood putty made out of some sawdust and some wood glue to fill in any of the large gaps that were left over from pieces not quite fitting together well. I then took a belt sander and sanded down all the edges for sh cuts that weren't very straight or anything like that, anything that didn't look right. Now it's time to paint. I just used a black latex paint that you'd use on like walls in your house or something, just whatever I had laying around. Um, I did like three or four coats, MDF tends to suck up paint 
quite a bit so you're going to need quite a few coats before you can really get a nice even look to the paint. I plan on applying decals to the sides afterwards to give it a little bit better look um, but for now I'm just going to leave it as a black box. Then I worked on the monitor bezel. This again I do cut out of smaller pieces and then glue them all together. It consists of four smaller pieces glued in a square. After they are all glued together I just paint them up like the rest. After the main cabinet is finished for the moment, it's time to cut out the control board. Um, this just a simple rectangle. Once it's cut out, I tried to use a drill press to drill out the holes for the buttons and the joystick. I tried to use a small bit and drill multiple holes in a circle to see if I could drill a bigger hole. Uh, this didn't really work at all, so instead I got a hole saw bit. This isn't ideal either, you probably want to use something like a Forstner bit or something that's better designed for wood. Um, but I used a hole saw to cut out the holes for the switches and the joystick. After this was all done, I applied a layer of paint and then applied a layer, well multiple layers of clear coat on top to keep protect it from all the wear and tear that it's going to get. So now that the uh, exterior of the cabinet is done, I just need to add a few finishing details and then we'll be finished with all the uh, hardware work. So the first thing I'm going to add to the outside is the standard trim that goes along the edge of arcade cabinets. It's something you see on all arcade cabinets, it's really a prominent feature. Um, to do this, you can buy some trim off of eBay. Normally they come in uh, 3 quarter inch widths, so that's why you should probably use 3 quarter inch MDF if you're to do this, it's much easier to find trim for. Also it just is easier to build with, but I was able to find some 9 16 uh, trim that's used on I think Donkey Kong or something, um, but it only came in white and it's not a half an inch, but it's, it's close enough for my purposes, so I ordered that. And then I had to use a router to cut a slot in the side of the arcade machine. I had to use a special slot cutter bit for this. Uh, you can buy these off Amazon. They're kind of rare and kind of expensive, but they, they do exist. One thing you'll find with the slot cutter bit once you start cutting is that this thing creates a lot of dust. So you're definitely going to want to hook it up to a vacuum or something uh, to suck up the dust so it's not blowing in your face. I definitely got a face full of dust the first time I uh, turned it on. But it's relatively simple. You just go along the edge, you make sure your depth is right and you're cutting in the middle. And it's also easier if you have a 3 quarter inch MDF uh, because the depth of cut for the these blades is normally half an inch. So if I were to cut across the, uh, the front of a piece, I would cut it right in half. Uh, whereas if I use 3 quarter inch MDF, I could cut into the front of a piece. Another thing is that you really don't want to use the nail gun for this, like I said, because when you're going along the edge with the router bit, you don't want to ruin your nice expensive bit by hitting a bunch of nails on the way down. So I had to cut in between where I nailed uh, the pieces together, and this made a lot more work. It was harder to cut. And it was also harder because I had to do a lot more work on the trim itself. Once the slaw is cut, then you're going to want to take your trim and cut it down to make sure it fits. Uh, I had to cut out all the tongue area, the T part that sticks out the bottom that's supposed to go into the slot, where uh, my slot stopped because of the nails. So this was a lot more work. I just used side cutters and X-Acto knife. It's a pretty soft material, so an X-Acto knife just cuts through it like butter. Um, but it was definitely a lot more work because of using the nail gun. To attach it, I had to use hot glue. Ideally, this should just be a friction fit into your slot, but I think the slot cutter a bit that I got was a bit too thick, and the trim that I got was just a bit too thin, so it didn't really friction fit in that well. So I used hot glue to hot glue it all along the edge. So that's the exterior of the arcade cabinet done. Uh, you can check out my next video where I'll be doing the electronics and hooking up all the buttons for the control panel 
and getting the Raspberry Pi ready.